In this video, I'm going to talk about the pharmacokinetics of opioids and discuss a key pharmacokinetic principle by using a couple of examples of our narcotics. So let's start off with pharmacokinetics. And then I'll put opioids. And let's take a tour of what happens when you inject an opioid or any drug for that matter into the blood vessel. How does that concentration of that drug after you administer it, how does it change over time? Where does that drug go? Where does it go first? Where does it go next? Where does it go later? And what happens uh, when it reaches a steady state or an equilibrium. So we're going to take this, we're going to start off our tour here with our syringe. And our syringe has narcotic in it, or opioid in it. And for the sake of simplicity, let's say we inject a um, a discrete number of opioid molecules into the bloodstream. So let's just make that number, let's say we injected eight molecules, five, six, seven, eight. And for the sake of simplicity, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna label time moving forward in this direction just so we don't have to keep drawing blood vessels, new blood vessels. So let's say here at time one, we inject eight molecules of opioids. So those are all in the bloodstream. So what's gonna happen after that? Well, there are certain organs, such as the heart, the kidneys, the liver, and the brain, that are called vessel-rich groups. And I'm gonna designate it as VRG here. These vessel-rich groups, they take up a majority of, a majority of uh, blood flow is perfused through these vessel-rich groups. So if you can imagine the concentration or the amount, let's say eight of our narcotic molecule or our opioid molecules, they're gonna get distributed Initially, they're going to be taken up by this vessel-rich group pretty quickly because this group is starving for blood. They, they like being perfused. They are very well perfused. So let's draw what's going to happen at this time. So I'm going to designate time two as what happens when our vessel-rich group takes some of those opioid molecules. So let's say instead of eight opioid molecules, now we have six. There are two that got distributed within the vessel-rich group and taken up. Afterwards, there's going to be not a vessel-rich group, but there's going to be a vessel-poorer group. I'm not going to say vessel-poor group, but there's a vessel-poorer group which consists of the muscles. So this is a muscle here that I'm trying to draw. And fat or adipose tissue, which I'm drawing right here. And I'm gonna say vessel poorer group. And that is also these, these vessels or these organs are gonna take up more of that drug that's been injected into the bloodstream, not as much, not as high or as high of a rate as the vessel rich group, but at a decreased rate, but they're still going to take up those opioid molecules nonetheless. So instead of taking two of those molecules like the vessel, the hungry vessel rich group, the vessel poorer group is going to take one of those molecules. So we're left with five molecules into the bloodstream. 
Now what's going to happen, and this is, let's describe this at t time equals 3. Now what's going to happen at this time here, time equals 4, is that eventually, because of the law of mass action, there's a tendency to achieve an equilibrium state or a steady state. And that steady state is going to be there's an equal uh, amount or equal concentration of drug in the bloodstream as there is out of the bloodstream or in the other organs. So eventually, we're going to be left with four of these molecules in the plasma and four of these molecules outside of the plasma or outside the blood vessel. So this I'm going to designate here as a steady state. Okay, so we have this figure. Let's draw it on a graph just to represent our pharmacokinetic, um, our pharmacokinetic graph and uh, relate it to our little illustration that we drew here. So on the x-axis, we're going to see how this correlates to, to, uh, to a mathematical, mathematical graph here. So here we're going to draw time on the x-axis, and on the y-axis, we're going to draw, or we're going to label it, I should say, the drug concentration in the plasma. So let's start off here at time equals 1. At time equals 1, what's going to happen is you're going to see an initial big rise in your drug plasma concentration. Afterwards, at time 2, you're going to see that vessel rich group take up an increased proportion of that drug that was injected into the blood vessels. So this is going to, you're going to see a steep decline in the rate or in your drug plasma concentration. And this is, this is called distribution. It's part of distribution. And then at time three, we're still going to see a decrease in our plasma concentration, but it's going to be at a decreased rate. So the slope is going to be less steep. So just like that. And this phase where it's less steep can be thought of as there's a little bit of redistribution that happens after um, the, the concentration of a drug goes into the vessel rich group, it kind of slows down. You'll see some seeping of that, or you'll see some uh, uh, drug concentration from the organs make its way back to the plasma. So at this stage is sort of where redistribution happens. And then at T equals 4, what we're going to see is we're going to reach a steady state. So you're going to see this decrease in plasma concentration. Eventually, eventually it's going to start leveling out just like that. All right, so this is our figure that correlates with what's going on in this little drawing or diagram. Now, a couple of researchers try to figure out, well, what happens when we're at this steady state? And let me label this as steady state. What happens if we're at this steady state infusion and we want to wake the patient up? How can we tell um, how long a patient is going to wake up depending on how long the infusion has been running for? So we're going to we're going to continue this conversation down over here. So what these researchers did is they determined 
how long after stopping a medication uh, will 50% of the drug in the plasma be eliminated or decrease? So we'll make that clear in just a second here. So here we have the infusion duration, which is time. And on the y-axis, the authors decided to see the time or how long it takes for 50% of the drug in plasma or I should rephrase this here the time for the time for a drug concentration in plasma drug concentration in plasma to decrease by 50% so and essentially how long it takes for a drug concentration in the blood to decrease in half. And what they found is that not all drugs work the same. When they gave fentanyl, when they used a fentanyl infusion to achieve a steady state infusion and they turned off the fentanyl, what they realized is that the longer the infusion goes on, the increase, the longer time it takes to decrease that concentration of fentanyl in the blood by 50%. So fentanyl has a, has a long half-life, not only half, not a half-life, but the half-life in the context related to the infusion duration. So that is the term, and that is context sensitive halftime. The context sensitive halftime is the time it takes for a drug to decrease by 50% in the plasma during a steady state infusion. So the context here is the infusion duration. So fentanyl can be thought of as, as having a, lo a large or a long or a high context sensitive half time. The longer the infusion stays, the longer it's going to take to get rid of that fentanyl. Now, Remy fentanyl, on the other hand, interestingly, the longer you keep its infusion duration, the time it takes to decrease its concentration in the blood to by 50% remains the same. It remains constant. So this is Remy fentanyl. So Remy fentanyl has a constant context sensitive half time, it has a short context sensitive half time. The context sensitive half time of Remy fentanyl is about three minutes, no matter how long your infusion is running for. So this plays an important role. Uh, this concept here of context sensitive half time plays an important role when you are trying to determine how long you need to turn off a, an infusion in order to allow or time your emergence from anesthesia. So just to quickly summarize, we have when we inject the drug, it increases the plasma levels. There's some distribution to the vessel rich group and followed by redistribution. And then there is uh, continued uptake at a slow rate by the vessel poorer group, eventually reaching a steady state. The longer that you keep a steady state or infusion going at steady state, you need to figure out every drug is different. You need to figure out the context sensitive half time of that drug in order to wake your patient up properly. The context sensitive half time in, the, in, the sense, in this sense is the time it takes for a drug concentration to decrease by 50% in the plasma.